All right, so we have to talk about lines, uh, which sometimes are referred to as linear functions. These two words are not actually totally interchangeable, but we use them pretty interchangeably until linear algebra class. Um, so let's go with the idea that this is mostly lines, and your book occasionally refers to them as linear functions. I would prefer if you thought about lines as lines. Cool? So what characterizes a line? In other words, if I wanted to, wrote, to write definition, a line is a function of one variable with what? Like in your head, what's a line, guys? There's a straight line. Like, here's some axes, right? It has at least two points. X and Y? Like it has like two like. Okay, yeah, it's determined uniquely by two points. Right? So like if I tell you here's a point and there's a point, you can draw the unique line that goes through those. Mm -hmm. And how would one do this? Straightly. <laughs> Straightly. <laughs> one would do something like this, right? No, Is that a line? No, that's a right. No, that's a right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a line? Okay, so I think I've established that it has to go all the way from the left end of the thing to the right end of the thing, right? My claim would be that that's part of being a line, right? Um, would this be a line? Like if I cut that part off? Why not? Yeah, I would call this two rays. Right? Or it's missing a line segment, right? So... There's something about like, oh, well, it has to actually go the whole way, right? So I think I need, it's a function of one variable with a domain of, what's the domain of a function like I'm describing? Infinite. Yeah, but the ray had an infinite domain too. Isn't that down to the domain of x? Uh huh. Because it starts here, right, and goes that way forever. So its domain is infinite. But specifically, right, like I think you're on the right track. All real numbers. You guys with me on that? That's to exclude rays and pairs of rays or line segments, right? Because those things don't have domains that are all the real numbers. They're just part of the real numbers. You guys with me on that? So a line's a function of one variable with a domain of R and well, what do you want about the line? Like a line should be, like, what makes a line so liney? It should be straight. Yeah, it's got to be straight, I right? I want to describe that mathematically. Good. I think, you, I think you can with some help. A constant oh. slope? Yeah, it's got to have a constant slope, right? So it's got to have a constant rate of change. So a line can't be, like, curved at all? A line cannot be curved. Because bendy things aren't lines. Okay. They're bendy things. <laughs> right, so a line is really specifically... A function of one variable with a domain that's all real numbers and a constant rate of change. Okay, and now I'm still lying to you because there's still something I can draw that has these two properties that's not the line you're thinking of. So let me demonstrate by breaking this one. What if I did this? Is that a line? Well, it's got some constant rate of change. It has a constant rate of change. Well, it wait, still wait. has a domain of all real numbers. But like the rate of change between like negative one and one on the graph is different from like the rate of change between negative one and like negative three. 
nice. You guys see that? I lied to you a little bit, right? This has a constant local rate of change, right? But the average rate of change isn't constant. You guys with me on that? Cool. Good idea. Very nice. So another thing I can add to avoid stuff like this and avoid this, like, well, do you mean a constant, like, local rate of change or a constant average rate of change? Is I can just add the word continuous up here. Right, because that function is in particular what? You guys remember the word continuous? What's a continuous function? <laughs> continuous. No breaks. Yeah, there's no breaks in it, right? So this function fails to be continuous, right? So if I force continuity or, a, and alternatively, I could force a constant rate of change and average rate of change. That would also do it. That will get me my liney line that I'm so used to. Um, so is a straight vertical line not a line? A straight vertical line is not a line, according to this definition. You guys see that? It is, in fact, a vertical line which has a separate definition. Why is it called a line? It's not called a line, it's called a vertical line. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is the yeah, why is the word line in there? Because it looks like a line, right? But it's not a function. Yeah, it is a little frustrating, right? But I had to settle for one or the other because a horizontal line and a vertical line, right? One's a function of x and the other one's a function of y, right? One's going to fail the vertical line test, <laughs> no matter which orientation you look at your picture in, right? So one of them's not going to be a function, but I want to talk about functions. You guys cool with that? Okay. So we should maybe add a note, right? Right. A vertical line is exactly what you think of it as. And it is not, in fact, a line according to this definition. You guys cool with that? You don't have to be cool with that. I just have to make some choices for my definitions. That's a choice that we made. Well, that's a choice I made and forced on you. Cool? Questions, skills? OK, what can you tell me about lines? What do you guys know about lines? Like, you guys know a bunch of stuff about lines. You've taken like three classes now that have lines in them. You can graph them with slope intercept form, like point. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, I would think important things are like picture, right? It might be nice to remember that there's a point slope. Right? What's the thing about point slope? Gives you the slope from two points. Okay, so there's another thing, which is two points, right? So what's the thing I should remember about two points and lines? I said it earlier. Does anybody remember exactly what it says? Two points uniquely identify the line. Yeah, perfect. with me on that? Keep in mind that line might not be a, one of these lines, it might be a vertical line. Just still not a line. Cool? Okay. Uh, what about a point and slope? A line has a point and a slope. A line has lots of points and a slope though. What's special about a point and a slope? It should be constant. The slope should be constant. Yeah, that's our constant rate of change part, right? Mm -hmm. That the slope is uniform. But what is it, what's special about a point and a slope? The coordinates of the point is equivalent to the slope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also identical. 
Yeah, it also uniquely determines the line. Cool. So the things you should have in your head are something like the usual picture, a point and a slope uniquely to determine the line, alternatively two points uniquely determines the line, what else? You should have some equations in your head. Too. What are your equations that should be in your head about lines? Y equals mx plus b. Okay. So I'm going to change that just slightly into L of x is mx plus b. Or maybe, maybe we'll just do y of x. How about that? Right, just to update our notation. Right, because this thing really is a function, right? That's another reason for me writing this, right? for me using this kind of funny definition where vertical lines aren't lines. Because if I use this definition, then all lines have this form. Vertical lines do not have this form, however. You guys see that? So if I want to say something like all lines can be written in the form y of x equals mx plus b, then I have to exclude vertical lines from that. You guys with me on that? that make better sense as to why I did that kind of funny thing? Okay. Uh, what's this form called? Slope intercept. Yes. This is called slope intercept form. Okay. Anybody know another thing about lines? How about if a point and a slope uniquely determine a line, maybe there's a point-slope form. I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> cool. So that one would be y of x is m times x minus x naught plus y naught. And this guy is point-slope form. Cool that? Mm -hmm. that one should defers go in your brain. I don't really care if you guys have y equals mx plus b in your brain, but you should definitely have point slope form in your brain. Cool. Because there's going to be a bunch of different occasions when I have something like a tool that tells me the slope of a line and a reason to know one point. Like there's a calculus tool that what it does is it makes slopes of lines at, at points. So you're going to have this like, okay, I've got a point and I've got this tool that I can use to get a slope. So now I'm at point and slope. And I would like you to not struggle with how do I put those together. Right? Just have this in your head, write it down, fill in the blanks. Life will be easy. Um, there's another one. What's the other? Wow, there's two more forms of lines. Okay, this one's wild, but I think it, you got it. It's the same thing as point slope form. Oh, the change of y. Yeah, the slope, right, should be the change in y per change in x, right? So if I had two points, I might call those the zero point and the first point. Or maybe I'd call them the first point and the second point. Does that make life easier if I call them the first point and the second point? Okay, so if I had the first point and the second point, I'd do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus, one, minus x1. x2 minus x1. Nice. And this guy is called, well, if the other one was point slope form, yeah, this one would be called two point form. Creative name. It'd be harder to remember if we were more creative, right? <laughs> uh, and then there's another one that's dumb. So I'm not going to show you that one. Deal with it. Cool. Questions, deals? Any questions about any of these? You all remember most of these? No. no. <laughs>
Okay, the very important things that I want you to put in your head are this one. Put that in your head. It helps if you associate these two words. Constant rate of change and log. They're not exactly the same thing. You guys with me on that? Because there's a little more stuff you need to be aligned. It's a little bit harder than having a constant rate of change. But having a constant rate of change is a really good guess. Like, there aren't so many things with constant rate of change that aren't aligned. Let's pull that. Rays, at the very least, are one that has a constant rate of change, but is more. Cool? Questions on this? So put those two things next to each other in your head, and put the point slope form definitely in your head. 